Okay, let's continue our discussion of muscle contraction and tension. This time I want to talk to you about how muscles create the most tension when they're engaged. Some what we call your length tension relationship. Meaning the muscle length at the beginning of contraction determines how much force you can generate. So, for example, if the muscle is too short, like this, too, too, too short already, too contracted, here, the sarcomeres in the muscle will be like this. And then your myosin is almost already maximally shortened so we can't get any shorter right so weak tension here muscles too short there's not enough space for you to form cross bridges and pull 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 to create tension before the muscle before the sarcomeres are already hitting each other so that, that's that's bad if it's too long so the muscles to stretch out, overly stretched, then the sarcomeres are like this. Too far apart, now that even, so now the myosin does not have much overlap. Okay. To catch and form, and form cross bridges to create power. So it's too long, there is minimal overlap. That's also not good. Eventually, if you start off this far, eventually, if, if, if you can get it short enough to be in, the, in a good zone, then you can get, get power. But initially, you have very big power. You can't form enough cross bridges to catch it, to start to pull. Then at, 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 at what's called the optimal length, okay. at the optimal length here, the sarcomeres have enough overlap. So here, 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 here. So now the, the, the myosin has enough overlap to create enough cross bridges to give you maximal force generation. So, so this is best, okay? Most power at this level. And interestingly, when we relax our limbs, Normally, they are resting at the proper optimal length that allows for maximal force. This is why your elbow is not like this when you rest it. It's like this, ready to go here. It's not like this, here or here, here. Okay, it must be optimally resting so you can form the most cross bridges and have the most distance to create enough power. Okay, it's called your length tension relationship. All right. Let's, let's, let's um, do another idea here. Let's discuss another thing of what's called muscle fatigue. Muscle fatigue, over time, you know, they can work for you for a while, but eventually they, they start to give you less power in response to the same, same amount, amount of, of activation. So let's look at that point. So the, the idea is this. So this is, say, a graph of how the muscle is, is working. So, so here, so you're hitting it with a certain stimulus. And it gives, it gives you this much power. Hit it again, same power. And keep hitting it, the same amount of stimulus. Eventually the power starts to fall off. So here's what, so here's tension that's being generated by the muscle and here's time. Over time and stimulus, you get less power. From the muscle in response to the same. This is called fatigue. Muscle fatigue. You're unable to get maximal power from the muscle anymore because something is happening. So there's some reasons why we have muscle fatigue. Let's discuss a few of them. One of them is this. We call a conduction failure. So remember, your muscle cells can generate action potentials. And so they still require the same sodium and potassium ion distribution. 
to create the depolarization wave, the repo, and, and the hyperpolarization hyper, hyper wave parts as well. So, you know, when you're doing this, you still have, have this process going on. We're here, this is K plus coming out. This part is NA in, as usual, you know, what we, we got for neurons. So in this case, sometimes here you have excess K plus. Well, it, it, eventually, if you over and over again activate the, the, the NMJ, you will push so much Ks out of the cell that you are unable to, to create this phase anymore. So too much Ks out, and so repolarization is prevented until you're given the sodium potassium pump a chance to bring Ks back in. So excess K out from repetitive activation of, of NMJ will temporarily pre allow, prevent you from creating more action potentials until the K ions are back in the cell. Okay, so excess K out prevents you from repolarizing during the action potential of, of the muscle cell. Another cause of your fatigue is lactic acid buildup. So muscles can shortcut the process of, process of making ATP. And when they shortcut it, they create lactic acid in, in exchange for it. So then, so as you increase your levels of lactic acid in the muscle cell, that will change the pH, drop the pH. And once you drop the pH, then enzymes stop working. So this affects enzyme activity. So enzymes such as your ATPase in meiosis may stop working, as well as the enzymes that pump calcium back into the SR, so your calcium ATPases as well, also stop working. So, so improper pH will affect enzyme activity and muscle, muscle generation or muscle, muscle tension generation will be affected by that process. Another factor is you, so also right here, another factor here as well may also be your depletion. Depletion of ACH. Remember, the ACH is released in the NMJ. If you are always activating that NMJ, you may run out of ACH. You need time to replenish it. So ACH depletion is also a factor that can prevent the NMJ from, from working properly. So back, back to the other one. So the third factor here is your, and again, your ATPase enzyme. Okay, so in this part, or it's called prevention of the cross bridge cycling. Okay, this happens because this reaction gets prevented. So remember that in order for you to cock the head of myosin, ATP has to be broken down into ADP plus PI. Over time, as you do this reaction, eventually this side becomes too, too much. You start to accumulate too many ADP and PIs, and the reaction will want to go back this way. Okay? So you need time to allow for the reactants to get to decrease in concentration in order for you to keep going this way. So you must pause to allow, for, again, almost like what's called a re-equilibration of the, you know, sorry, your, your, your uh, products and reactants so this reaction is more is favorable. Otherwise, it starts to go backwards. And if it goes backwards, then you can't cock the head, and so the muscle is fatiguing. And the fourth factor is what we call your central command fatigue. This is when you quit. You quit before you begin. So you go into the gym, and you're out of the gym in two minutes because oh, I'm tired, I don't feel like it. Okay, that's, that, that's the will. You, you say to yourself, I'm tired, therefore you don't set any action potential down, the, down to the NMJ to activate muscles. Muscles are fine, but you're not fine. Okay? That's called the central command fatigue. That's the most common way that we get fatigue, actually. It's just, uh, I'm tired, all right?
So these are four ways your muscles can become fatigued. Fatigued. Okay, I want to discuss some more, some more stuff with you. Let's, let's pause here again. There's a quick segment there.